Good morning, welcome back to our Portuguese homestead. Today is a kind of chilly overcast day. It's under 20 degrees right now, so it's cold. <laughs> hey, Bush. Uh, that was the cat. <laughs> um, so it's a perfect time to do a little bit of work or a lot of work in the garden. Um, but I'm starting in the greenhouse here because my house is up because my tomato jungle needs um, a little bit more pruning. Uh, believe it or not, we already pr pruned quite a bit. I was trying to keep uh, on top of the suckers so that I would have one leader for all the plants. I did not succeed in that, so most of them now have two or three, but that's okay. Uh, we gave most of them um, a string to let them uh, hang on to. So that's gonna be fine. And this greenhouse is not, not so tall, so they can't go into the air forever. So it's good to have some side shoots, but they need a little bit of pruning, um, especially on the bottom where there are some yellowing and things. So we're gonna start with that. My uh, gardening buddy for today. Okay, bye. Yeah, how is up? I'm not going to Uh, this here is a volunteer pumpkin. I have no idea how it got here, but I'm just going to let it grow because it's doing well, as you can see. And then I'll just let it grow all the way on the bottom here under the cucumbers and the peppers over there. And just see how it goes. Uh, but it also needs a trim because it's uh, growing on the path here. So I'm just going to cut off this leader um, so that we don't walk all over it. Yeah, and uh, this lady is being very annoying. I had locked her out, but she found a way in. <laughs> hey, Schat. Yeah. She just wants to be with the plants, which I understand. Um, things really want to grow here, especially things that I haven't planted here. I just noticed that there were apparently some acorns here that are starting to grow into trees, which we don't want in our greenhouse. So I'm just going to take them as well.
All right, so the green bean trellis is done. As you saw, they were very ready to have something to climb on. So Martin helped me to set that up. Thanks. <laughs> and I just wanted to mention that I finally made the better choice to, to start using like natural um, rope or like string. So this, this can compost. Previous years and in the greenhouse still we use plastic string which is um, really annoying. So with um, the old trellis uh, from last year, yesterday I had to spend the whole time cutting it all up because I didn't do it uh, at the end of summer last year um, and it doesn't break down and it will be there forever so if you like lose some string somewhere it's just plastic pollution basically and i always think with with the plastic okay yeah well i'm gonna reuse it no that never happens <laughs> um because you have to untangle it every time and it's just really very annoying so i t finally pulled the trigger and bought this one so I can just cut it up, put it with all the dead plants in the compost at the end of summer. And then it's done and over with. So a more sustainable choice. Finally. Um, yesterday I started, I think you might have seen it a little bit. I started on the tomatoes, but then it started to drizzle very weirdly. So I had to put away the camera, but I did finish it or worked on it a little bit more. The tomatoes outside here are doing really well as well. Um, the tomatoes in the greenhouse are obviously bigger, but they're coming in along nicely. They've been in the ground for a few weeks. It's been good weather for them. These are some Marizano. I haven't pruned them at all. And they also already have some tomatoes but these are determinate tomatoes so uh, I'm not gonna prune them too much on the other side we have um, just some beefsteak tomatoes I think I accidentally am growing too many tomatoes again <sighs> fun <laughs> and then in between them um, you might have seen in the video that we planted um, I did some beans in between and this is supposed to attract pollinators and uh, yeah just the good bugs simply put with these beefsteak tomatoes I'm doing a similar or the better worked out version of the trellising I did last year so I have been pruning these and uh, they're looking good and I'm doing the Florida weave method of trellising which means that you just put stakes in and then on both sides you um, have a string and then the plant can kind of weave in between and that should uh, hold it up pretty nicely and if you want you can also just like uh, attach it to the string if it's like drooping like this one um, it was a method that I tried out last year and I kind of enjoyed. Uh, there are very many methods of trellising, so my advice is to do whatever works for you and what you like. Uh, this is what I like. So I yesterday I added two uh, layers of string and now I'm gonna just add another one so, just so that it's there. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side for the San Marzano. Is that the correct pronunciation? I don't know. For the other tomatoes.
All right, I think this looks um, pretty good for now. I see I didn't do the spacing the same, but that's okay. Um, I also see that some of these I can start pruning on the bottom, but I'm not gonna do that today because tomorrow we actually have some rain in the forecast. So I don't wanna um, make any wounds on the plant and then they get wet and um, yeah, that just doesn't sound like a good idea to me. So I'm just gonna leave it for now and then I'll come back after the rain. Okay, good morning. The rain has passed, um, but it's a little bit drizzly now, so I'm not gonna, I'm not sure how long I can have the camera on, but I do wanna get some stuff done. Um, it's already quite late in the season, so I just wanna get it in now so that it has a few days before it get, gets warm again, or hot, I would say. It's gonna be 30 again, <laughs> 30 degrees Celsius. So, um, the plan for now is to plant sweet potato here and then sorghum in the next bed. Uh, the beds that we prepped last week. And I just wanted to say a little bit just about why we're doing this and why we're only doing a little bit. So I don't talk about this on the channel much, but over the last maybe year or so, we've kind of gotten into prepping a little bit more. And for us, that means really starting to think about what we can grow in the long term. That's gonna be a good um, thing for us to grow here, especially considering the wheat shortages that are in the news right now. Um, I don't wanna be so reliant on that kind of thing. So we're really thinking about, okay, what? In terms of calories can we grow that if flour gets too expensive we can eat potatoes and all that kind of starchy things get too expensive so um, this is obviously a multi-year plan we still want to have the garden kind of smallest this year because I want to focus on other things so we don't have that many vegetables growing right now but enough for us to um, eat throughout the summer um, and tomatoes to give away to the neighbor. Um, so these blocks are kind of just trials to see if the things want, uh, can grow well here. Uh, last year we did a super tiny batch of sorghum, which did really well. So now we're gonna expand that, see how it does in a block. And then over time we can um, kind of expand that if we need to, because we do have the space. Oh, and we came to sorghum because it's uh, grown um, primarily in Africa and it's really like drought and heat resistant. And I've noticed with trying to grow corn here, for me, it just needs too much water. So that's why I'm not doing any corn, not even sweet corn. It's just not worth the effort for me. And sorghum can produce quite a bit in a small space, so it's... A really good thing to try for like small home growers if you want to do a little bit of your own grain. I'll show that in a moment. First we have sweet potatoes. So I had two types of sweet potatoes, um, orange and purple. Uh, the orange I got from Lidl and I thought they were organic but maybe they were not. I'm not sure but they didn't sprout at all. Um, I remember how I was saying that these weren't doing anything. Uh, I just noticed this. I don't know if it's focusing on it. Um, it seems that this one is starting to grow. So I'm going to keep watering this. And maybe we'll also have some orange sweet potato slips. And the purple ones I got from the local organic store and they sprouted really well in the end. Um, so I made quite a few slips that I'm gonna plant now um, and just see how they do here. It's a, it, it, like I said, it's a trial. Um, I'm not putting, trying in my mind not to put too much pressure on it, um, but they're delicious and I would love for them to be, become a staple crop in the future for us. So yeah, first sweet potatoes.
right sweet potatoes are planted and watered did about a meter in between and 50 centimeters within the row then next up and finally and then everything i wanted to plant planted is the sorghum i'm gonna sow it in this uh, biggest bed and then water and then we're done She's very involved today. <laughs> and a little bit annoying. Yeah. Yeah, you're in the back. <laughs> 